Hello together, my name is Sascha Gebhardt from uh, RWTH Aachen University and today me and my colleagues uh, Daniel Bündgens and Sebastian Pick will, uh, will present the virtual reality group of the RWTH Aachen University to you. The outline of uh, our talk is like follows. Um, first we will say some words about the uh, virtual reality group and um, how it is organized in the university. Then we will um, <clears throat> tell you some more about the newly installed X-Cave at, at our university before coming to um, our software infrastructure and uh, afterwards my colleague Sebastian Pick will tell you something about um, current re uh, research projects in the field of simulation science and others. Um, the RWTH Aachen University has about 30,000 students, 414 professors and um, 2,000 scientists and is organized in nine faculties. On the slides you can see some uh, photos of important buildings of our university. In the upper left um, you can see the main building, in the upper right the uh, so-called Super C, which is um, a building with a meeting and conference rooms and so on. In the lower right you can see the um, clinical center of our university and in the lower left the um, computing center where um, our offices and our virtual reality installations are installed. Um, the virtual reality group is part of two central institutions or uh, important institutions of our university. Um, on the one hand, it is part of the Faculty of Mathematics, Computer Science and Natural Sciences, um, more precisely of the Institute of Scientific Computing. On the other hand, it is part of the central institutions <clears throat> and there of the Center for Computing and Communication. This results in um, two main parts of our work, which are research and teaching as well as infrastructure and services. <clears throat> And um, these two different parts benefit, benefit from each other, um, like for example, uh, research papers developed in the research and teaching track are um, used in the software development, which is then used for the development of, of applications for our infrastructure and services. At first, some words about our old cave. Um, it was installed in spring 2004 by Barco and has a footprint of 3.6 on 2.7 meters at a height of also 2.7 meters. Um, it has four back projected walls and a top projected floor and is driven by LCD projectors <coughs> with a resolution of 1600 on, on 1200 pixels each. For 3D view we are using circular polarization and um, the tracking system is an optical tracking system by ART. Um, at the moment we have the luxus of uh, using two caves simultaneously, the old one and this year we got installed the new so-called X cave, um, which I will introduce to you, uh, to you now. <coughs> Uh, in comparison to the old cave, the X cave is uh, much larger. It has a footprint of 2.25 on 2.25 meters at a height of 3.3 um, meters. Um, the top view shows uh, in red the um, area of the new cave uh, compared to the area of the old cave in green. And um, here are two different, uh, different side views of the comparison. <coughs> Additionally, um, even while being bigger, the new cave has uh, smaller pixels. Um, those are 1.5 and 1.5 millimeters compared to 2.3 millimeters square in the old cave. And um, here again in comparison. And uh, we also have much more pixels in the new cave. It's about uh, 40 million pixels in comparison to 9 million pixels in the old cave. Why is this the case? We are using uh, better projectors now. In the old cave we had uh, projectors with a re resolution of 1600 and 1200 pixels and a brightness of 3000 NZ lumen. The new uh, projectors that we are using are Baku Galaxy projectors with a resolution of um, HD+, mm -hmm. uh, meaning 1920 on 1200 pixels. and um, 
four times the brightness with uh, 12,000 MZ lumens. And um, we aren't using, like in the old KF10 projectors now, but uh, 24 projectors and um, every single projector uh, is producing a stereo image via active stereo. In this slide you can see the mechanical structure of the current cave. Um, as you can see we have four projectors uh, delivering images for each of the walls and eight projectors delivering the images for the floor. And the front wall can be um, completely opened or uh, completely closed. <clears throat> This is a, uh, an image of the installation of the um, glass plates that are used for the floor. <clears throat> the floor consists of two, pla uh, two plates um, that have been installed via the screens you can see in the images. To sum all this up, um, the footprint of the new cave is approximately 5.5 uh, and 5.5 meters. It is 3.3 meters uh, tall. Um, we're using 24 HD active stereo projectors for uh, the, producing the images and we have a resolution in total of approximately 3200 on 2000 pixels per wall and um, about 3600 pixels square for the floor. The overall brightness of the new cave is nearly 300,000 NZ lumens and um, the cave is driven by a GPU cluster that has um, 24 nodes, each node uh, using two graphic cards which results in um, 48 GPUs in total. How is this cave operated? Uh, we are developing an own um, virtual reality toolkit which is called Vista. Um, this toolkit is under development for about 10 years now and it is a C++ library with uh, reusable components but um, does not uh, have a built-in uh, GUI support because that would be uh, um, constraining in the way how you can realize virtual reality applications. Um, it has gone open source two and a half or I think even three years ago now and for interaction it offers a low latency driver architecture, um, concurrency support, uh, um, um, built-in history for input data and it also has some support for high quality audio rendering. Um, additionally we are developing a second uh, software library which builds up on the Vista toolkit. This library is called Flowlib and um, it is a Flowlib that we mainly use for interaction visualization tasks. The focus of the library was uh, or is on the explorative analysis of unsteady data sets and like the name um, already tells us uh, it's especially for flow phenomena but can be used for any other visualization task as well. And it uses uh, basic data structures and visualization methods from the um, visualization toolkit VTK, which I assume everybody should know. <clears throat> and it is used for real 3D interaction and offers uh, possibilities for creating widgets for um, abstracting input devices and so on. And we are using real 3D interaction in this toolkit whenever possible, but also have support for uh, 2D user interfaces in the virtual environment when it is appropriate. Yeah, so much about the uh, basic infrastructure we are using here. And my colleague uh, Sebastian Pick will now tell you um, details on our various research and application fields as well as uh, ongoing research projects. Okay, hello, yes, I'm Sebastian Pick um, and I'll continue now. So what are we using our infrastructure, uh, software and hardware infrastructure for? Um, there are a couple of main um, research and application fields that we have and uh, the first of them is me mechanical engineering. What we do here is um, mostly visualization of factories or um, factory structures like you can see in the, in the two pictures here. Uh, the one is from the old cave. Um, another field of application is uh, simulation science. Uh, you already uh, heard about the flow loop, so the simulation science part is a rather big field. Um, we have had uh, in the 
in the past uh, focus on um, flow phenomena, but we also do um, other phenomena um, yeah, where basically everything that can be uh, simulated um, we try to um, visualize in one or the other project, um, which I will present shortly. Uh, another big field here is, um, yeah, well, medicine and neuropsychology. Um, we have uh, a couple of colleagues working on uh, various um, simulators that can be used to train um, yeah, uh, yeah, doctors uh, in the use of, of real hardware, medical hardware. Uh, and what you can see in, in the picture here is, um, well, an, an operation simulator where you uh, can do cuts to the human body. Um, yeah, that's just one of the simulators we have. And the last uh, field is basic methods. Um, so what we do there is, um, yeah, uh, research on basic methods for, for over, um, yeah, areas of virtual reality. Um, just recently we are doing a lot on uh, interact uh, navigation methods uh, through large environments uh, in virtual environments like the cave uh, especially. But we also have research going on in the direction of acoustics like you can see here in the picture. We have a system um, that is based on crosstalk cancellation and can generate real three-dimensional audio and that's, that's used in a variety of applications. Okay, these are the main fields. So what are some of the concrete um, applications? Um, for CES, it's, it's all you can see here basically. It's a, it's a lot about um, flow phenomena. So we have motors or turbines that we simulate, but also extruders where they um, want to simulate how, um, yeah, well, in this case, plastic is moving through these extruders to create objects and they want to optimize the plastic flow. Um, through the extruder or, um, yeah, well, we have had a project in the past on nasal airflow in the nasal, uh, nasal cavity where the, they wanted to analyze how to optimize um, the flow through the nose in some uh, critical cases where they have to do an operation and want to try to, to, to fix it before they do the actual operation. Um, we also do crash simulations. There's no picture on here for that now. Um, yeah, well, material science, as I just said, the extruder example, uh, by the way, the picture is in the bottom right, um, is one of those. Uh, and then we also had a very interesting project on pick housing where they wanted to optimize, um, well, the construction of such buildings uh, to optimize the yeah, airflow and, and stuff like that. Okay, so much for this overview. Um, a very prominent example, um, as was already said, is, is the flow phenomena uh, analysis. And uh, we're very proud of, um, of our virtual wind tunnel um, um, system where we can, um, and I will show you a video, I hope you can see it in the top right, where I can in real time, um, well, explore these flow phenomena by going into them using the cave or, or other systems and then just start to see particles like you would do in a real wind tunnel and they're advected uh, in real time in there. So what we use here is a completely GPU based um, particle tracer um, and we can use it on basically any grid structure or unstructured grid, grids. We can do it on, on steady or unsteady, uh, namely time varying data sets, um, no problems there. And we have a variety of, of rendering techniques. Uh, one of them, um, which is also used in the video uh, to the upper right or in the picture to the left, is, is um, billboard rendering. Um, and we use, um, yeah, we simply use billboards to reduce the geometric um, complexity of all the particles in the scene and then just do advanced lighting on them to make them appear three dimensional. Uh, so it's a very efficient technique as well. Um, Another rather big project that just ended a couple of weeks ago is um, called the BATSS. It's a virtual air traffic simulation uh, system. And what we tried here is we wanted to combine the visual um, immersion of, of the cave system and combine it with uh, acoustic systems to simulate air uh, traffic noise emissions close to an airport. And the idea was that we can use the increased immersion of, of uh, our hardware setup to give um, a, a user a better impression of this noise emissions. Um, a scenario you could imagine is like when, when they try to build new extensions to an airport and they need to communicate with a neighboring residents. Um, one of the biggest problems is that they cannot uh, convey intuitively what impact 
this extension will have on the uh, environment and this is basically the, the goal of this project. Um, so yeah, the idea is to make the effects of air traffic more explorable or tangible and um, yes, so far we're focused on acoustics here. Um, just a couple of details on, on what we did. You can see it uh, on the in the pictures to the right. So what you can do, you, you can um, yeah, generate, um, simulate, pre-simulate a variety of air traffic scenarios that you can then all load into the cave and explore um, in one session to each other. And we, we give a variety of tools uh, to analyze it. So um, on the visual side, we have, as you can see in the upper picture, um, a noise carpet on the ground, which is basically giving the user uh, um, an impression of how much noise is reaching the ground at various uh, locations and it's like an overview. Yeah? You have a color-coded map, um, basic technique to have a look, uh, an overview uh, look, but you can also go down to the ground and, and have an actual um, yeah, audible experience. Yeah? We use a headphone or a speaker-based system, we can do both um, um, and we use real 3D um, yeah, sound synthesis of the airplane noise that is emitted. So what we basically do is uh, we have a completely um, synthetic system without any pre-calculations to do this, this uh, uh, noise, noise um, calculations here. And then we have various uh, interaction techniques. For example, we have some Google Maps-like movements so you can grab the terrain, move through there. It's very efficient because we have very large uh, environments like 3,000 square kilometers. Uh, in the scenarios we used for development. Um, you can, we have some, some uh, trajectory dragging techniques um, to manipulate or explore the time domain. So what you can do, you, can, uh, you see it in the upper right uh, picture, there's an airplane and you see the trajectory and what you can do here is you can pick the airplane and just drag it along its trajectory to move through the simulation um, with respect to time. And then we also, and this is maybe interesting uh, in context of the Visionaire project, we also integrated our um, existing annotation system into this um, application. And what you can do is you can uh, put certain um, yeah, region of interest markers all around uh, the world and they are persistently stored for, for future um, exploration systems uh, sessions. And they also give you some feedback uh, uh, on the state of simulation. For example, in the upper right picture you have this uh, small text label on the ground which is indicating when a certain uh, noise threshold is exceeded and the, at the annotated um, position. Yeah, that's um, so much for the VATS project. And that's basically everything I would uh, wanted to present uh, to you about the project. So, yeah, thank you very much for your attention.